All right, now that your tank is clean, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take your distributor tube. You're gonna to wanna to insert that into your tank, find the center, and you're just gonna to wanna to verify the length that you're gonna to need to cut your distributor tube at. You're gonna either cut it flush for some valves or one inch above for others. The particular uh, reed bed that we're doing today is for a uh, valve that's cut one inch above. So I've got my handy block here to easily label. If you don't have a handy block like this, you can just uh, measure it up with the tape measure. So go ahead, mark your tube. Once it's cut to length, what you're going to want to do is just clean up your, your edges to make sure that you don't cut your o-ring. If you don't clean up the burrs, it's easy enough to wreck the o-ring on the inside of the valve. So you just want to clean it off, make sure it's smooth. Now that your distributor is cut, go ahead and reinsert into your tank. Cut one inch above here. Here's where we're going to enter either a cap or put in a, uh, a piece of duct tape, anything to protect your distributor from getting any media down in, inside of it. Once you have your cap or your plug or your tape covering your, your distributor tube, go ahead and grab your funnel and the media. So the media that you're going to get is going to typically be pre-measured out. So you're, if you get it from Diamond, you're always going to have the pre-measured quantity of gravel and of carbon. So what you're going to do is go ahead and just open up your, car, your gravel. And pour it in slowly. You want to make sure that your distributor tube does not move. It stays in the center. It's always good if you have someone to give you a hand. Um, you can always have them hold the distributor tube. Your gravel is going to provide a good base to hold the distributor tube down, also to allow for a better backwash, more even backwash, and better flows during service. Now you see I've got my plug here, it's got a little bit of gravel left in it. What I typically do is pull that out, and pour that down into the tank, then reinsert my cap. If you're using duct tape, you're not going to have that uh, recess in there, therefore you won't uh, have to really clean anything off. So the gravel's in the tank. Make sure your distributor has not come up at all. Make sure it's still in the center. Next step is taking your carbon. At this point, what you're going to want to do is grab a mask carbon is very dusty, um, would be recommended to do this either outside or in a well ventilated area. Again, recommended to put, wear a mask when doing this just because of the dust. Now that your carbon filter is filled, what you can do is you can remove your funnel, remove your cap. The next step we're going to 
take is we're, we are going to soak the carbon. This next step is uh, really a critical one if you're looking to uh, quickly backwash the unit, make sure that everything's um, clean uh, upon fire up. Filling it otherwise can be a relatively uh, tedious process because the carbon will absorb a tremendous amount of the water and it just takes time. So what we will typically recommend is soaking prior to putting the head back on and in service. Now to do this, you're going to want to do one of two things. You're going to either want to soak it and then siphon it back down for transport, or if you're on site on a new installation or uh, an on-site rebed, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to soak it, get it close to where you, your uh, end location is going to be, soak it, and fill it up to the top with water before you put the head down. This will reduce the time needed for uh, flushing of the carbon filter. The larger the carbon filter, so the more bags of carbon that you put in it, the larger the tank. Uh, the more critical it becomes, but the harder it is to move the tank once it's full, so uh, or once it's soaked. So what you're going to want to do is make sure that you are indeed close to where you need to be on the real large systems. So we'll take this over to the uh, hose to fill her up. Now we're over by the water hose here. We're going to fill it up with water uh, to start soaking the carbon. A couple keys, when you fill it with, go to fill your carbon filter with water, fill it around the outside of your distributor tube, do not fill it from the inside. If you fill it from the inside, you are pushing water into the bottom, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but if you push enough water in, what you're going to find is you're going to actually push some of your media right out of the top. Because it's so light and fluffy, what's going to happen is it's going to actually push the media up rather than absorb it into the carbon. So what you're going to want to do is start filling it. And you can go ahead and fill it right to the top. What you're going to find is that when you fill it to the top and let it sit, it's going to start to bubble. You're going to feel air coming out of the center. That's, the water is actually sealed on the top and it's going to start pushing that air out that distributor tube. All right, once your tank is almost full, what you're going to find is if you watch it, you're going to see it bubbling inside. You're also going to feel air coming up from the top. And what you're going to want to let it do is to just let it soak for 5, 10, 15 minutes. Um, ultimately, what you're looking for is that carbon is going to absorb that water. The larger the tank, the longer it may tank. What you're going to find is when it stops agitating and bubbles stop coming up, air stops coming up from your center tube, you're going to see that your water level will have dropped quite significantly inside your tank. At that point, what you can go ahead and do is continue to fill it up. Fill it all the way up to the top. Fill it up to the top so that, uh, until there's no room for air in the dome of the tank. Then you can go ahead and thread your valve on. Once this is done, you can go ahead and put the, the unit into service. And you don't want to send any of that carbon dust downstream. So what you'll do is you'll want to flush that to the drain. Um, typically people will take a pail or a garden hose and just flush it until it's clear of the gray. Um, if it is well soaked, um, if you've given it that 15-20 minutes necessary to truly soak completely and uh, it is full to the top, what you can also do is put your uh, valve, your carbon filter valve into um, uh, step it through back flush but then put it into fast rinse and let it rinse down uh, in service position. That fast rinse is the same as putting a garden hose on your outlet. So the water is going down through the media, up the center of your distributor tube, rather than backwash, which is down the distributor tube and back up to the, down the drain. The fast rinse just allows you to get rid of that carbon dust without the, uh, the potential of losing any, uh, any media on the initial startup. If there's any questions, always feel free to call Diamond H2O at 800 236 8931 or contact us on our website at diamondh2o.com. Thank you.